you go to school, to music school? No, I am. Um, I did GCSE music, that's about mm -hmm. as far as it went, but you needed to, you know, I had to write notation for that and it was all like learning about the different eras of classical music and Baroque and it's, none of it was of interest to me. So to do a music degree, I would have had to do probably music A level and that didn't appeal to me. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually did a physics degree, yeah. um, which is another side of like, I like to know how things work. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and it seemed like physics was the, that's where my brain is at. I like things that there are definite answers to and you you know, you can figure stuff out rather than the arty creative side. Well I see um, also noticed that uh, on your page and the lessons you do <coughs> that you like to figure stuff out. Yeah. You know, that's exactly what you do. Uh, that that's basically with the with the Dave Weckl stuff, what I found was you'd have this video, I mean you've seen it, right? So you play solos and songs and things, and that's really cool. And then he says, okay, here's like, a th he shows you a paradiddle, and then he says, and this is how you apply a paradiddle to the kit. And he does that, but then he'll go off and play things that aren't what he just explained. And with the solo stuff, it's like right left foot, right left foot, all that kind of thing. But then when he plays the solos, there's other things that are in there. And I was more interested in those things. So I spent a lot of my time trying to figure out the bits in the solos, you know. Um, How did you do that? Did you slow the tape down or? No, I just I just um, watched it a lot. I guess I did. I used to record the audio bits onto tape, so I didn't have to watch the video, and I just listened again and again. And I mean, I remember uh, I had the Zildjian Day in New York video, you know, with. Vinny Colyuta, that was the first time I saw Vinny. We're called Vinny. No, 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 that's the, you're thinking no, the Buddy Rich one. Oh, yeah, it had okay. Steve Gadd on it, Tommy yeah. Campbell, okay. Alex Acuna, okay. um, Vinny Colyuta, Billy Cobham was on there. Okay. And the Vinny Colyuta was the, the one that got me. And he held the sticks differently to, to Dave's. And I remember like standing in front of a mirror trying to like do all this. Yeah. It was all, I'm figuring stuff out, but figuring it out backwards. You know, it took me years to realize, like, well, he's not he's not doing this, he's just like, you know what I mean? Um, and the solo that he played on that, I mimicked because it was before I had any kind of idea of writing drum music and things. So I just heard it and copied it as best I could. But when he's playing paradiddle diddles, I'm just playing like buzz rolls and like hitting toms, you know? So what I was playing wasn't really what he was playing but it made me feel like, oh, this is cool, I'm doing, you know? And so gradually, my version got closer and closer as I figured out, oh, well, these are all like individual notes that he's playing, and this is some kind of rudiment, and this is whatever. Mm -hmm. So my ear got better as time went on, and I, I got a, a better understanding of things. And it was just, I see things like that, like a puzzle. I always get emails from people saying, can you transcribe this for me? And and I hate to, I don't like to do it, you know, it will be easy, but I think well, you'll get so much more out of it as a drummer if you figure it out for yourself, because it's so rewarding to like finally go, oh, that's, that's what it is. Yeah, but that's what you do on your webpage anyway. I mean, yeah. I've seen like, you know, for, for example, the <coughs> Fireball intro. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what you did. You figured it out for people. Yeah, it was because that was a request, a request and I've yeah. never, I've never really paid that much attention to, to Ian Pace, you know, I kind of thought, well, he's, he's no Vinny or Weckl, it's a different thing, but actually, this, he plays some pretty interesting stuff, and he's more like I was as that kid, having like mimicked things, you know what I mean? So if, you, if I transcribe a Vinny solo, it's like everything's on the grid, and it's easy to figure out exactly what, but an Ian Pace thing's a lot harder to write out because it's really messy, and, but it's, it's got a good feel to it and it's actually very hard to copy that stuff authentically um, so it's the same with this band actually with Steve Upton the original mm -hmm. drummer you know mm -hmm. I listen to some of those things and I he's not a drummer that I I'm really into but he certainly has some interesting things that he did that, that I you know I, I wouldn't do and I'll kind of copy them for the sake of the band and then it becomes part of my mm. you know repertoire as well yeah, sure I mean with, with Steve Upton I'd say Ian Pace and Steve, they have a lot in common. I mean, yeah, that is yeah. Another style of drumming. Actually. A lot of it's the sort of jazzy kind of background of anybody yeah. from that, that time. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the, the approach, I guess, I don't really know. But you know, the, the Steve Gadd thing of bringing the marching band stuff into drumming, and then after, 
it seems like after that point, all the guys I was into, the Weckles and the Vinnies, um, are on that like rudiment grids, yeah. do that kind of thing. And then I've heard Vinny going off in the other direction, trying to trying to play things that sound less like that, but they're still mm-hmm. based on like he knows what his hands are doing. And I kind of feel like with Steve and Ian Pace, they just they're going for ideas, and that maybe they just don't have the technique for it. But what comes out still sounds really cool. And I wouldn't go for those things because I I'm, I want to know what it is before I play it. Yeah. Okay, let's go back to the earlier years. Okay. <coughs> okay the first first live show you ever attended as a listener? Um, I think it was a Dire Straits concert. Oh, I think so bad. <laughs> no, I was with my parents because my dad, you know, like I say, was into into music, mm. and so I liked Dire Straits. And I think it was the night before my 11 plus, which is like a mm-hmm. test we do, you know, before you go to secondary school. So it was probably just around the time I was taking up the drums um, and I remember being highly disappointed that they didn't play the intro for Money For Nothing. I wanted to see that on the drums and they just came in with the riff. You oh. know? <laughs> <laughs> Who was the drummer then? Do you remember? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, of course, after some time, you know, practicing at home, you start looking for people to practice with. Yeah. So. What was your first band like? Uh, I think the first band was a guy who was in the year above me at school who had a Squire Strat, and I'd taken up guitar as well, mm. um, like a year after I took up the drums, so we'd jam things on guitar. And he played the keyboard, and he, w- he was really into like, let's have a death metal, you know, like not death metal, but like a heavy metal band was what he wanted to do. But the only song he'd written was like a love song on the keyboard that sounded like really awful. And then he had another one that was, I guess was pretty heavy. But me and him just used to jam guitar and drums and we'd play uh, Enter Sandman, you know, like that was kind of fun and a bunch of songs like that. Um, And we had, I had a little eight track recorder um, and we'd we'd record the, you know, the songs on there. And it was, it was fun. I've probably still got some recordings somewhere over there. Right. Okay. 